What's up everybody, my name is Dan On and welcome to Honestly. Now today we're taking a look at MSI's G65 Stealth with the 9th gen i7-9750H and the NVIDIA GeForce 1660Ti. Not the Max-Q version, but the full-blown desktop 1660Ti. Let's get honest. Right out of the gate, let's talk about its performance because this laptop is brand new and it has new hardware. Not only does it have that new 9th gen i7 CPU, but it has the brand new 1660Ti. So it only makes sense that we start with R. G B Because we all know RGB increases performance by like 40% Duh Enough of the trolling, but I feel like we've come too far now So let's hurry up and cover the RGB lighting real quick This keyboard has individually addressable RGB lights And it's bright, it's vibrant But it's a little bit sloppy because there's a lot of bleed from underneath the keys and it's so it's not as clean as let's say on my Razer Blade 15 or on the Logitech keyboard that I own, but still pretty good nonetheless. One slightly annoying thing is that this keyboard was made by SteelSeries, which is a point I'll get to in a minute. But because of that, you have to use SteelSeries' app in order to control the RGB lights. That's a little unfortunate because number one, their app is a little bit clunky, although highly customizable. And second, it's slightly annoying because you don't have a one-stop shop for tweaking all of the laptop settings. You have to use MSI's app for certain things and then SteelSeries app for the keyboard. So keep that in mind. Now getting back on track, here's what this laptop's performance looks like. In Cinebench 20, this thing beat out the previous generation's i7-8750H and the i7-7700K by a tiny margin with a score of 2,531. In Geekbench 4, the multi-core score was 23,496. In Unigen Heaven, it scored a 3,534, sitting right between the GTX 1070 Max-Q at 3,372 and the 2080 Max-Q at 4,583. In terms of games, this is the FPS I'm getting at ultra settings. Now in terms of cooling, this laptop does not do a great job at keeping itself cool. Now I know what you're thinking, it's a thin and light gaming laptop, of course it's gonna have issues like every other laptop out there, and I get that, except even when I was doing mundane tasks like browsing the web or just opening Battle.net, not any games, but just the platform, I saw this thing spike up to mid 80s to 90 degrees Celsius on the CPU using the auto fan curve. Even a not super resource intensive game like Overwatch caused the CPU to spike to 100 degrees Celsius and the GPU topped out at 76 degrees Celsius. And that's something you wanna keep in mind because that's going to impact the life of this laptop because Electronics plus heat equals bad. With that being said, I think MSI's decision here is very interesting because their app amongst many, many other useful features like full control over the fan curve, which is very nice, allows you to do something very weird, which is overclock your laptop. That's right, you can overclock your CPU and GPU in spite of how hot it already gets. It, it kind of makes no sense. It's like, hey man, I heard you're running hot. Here's some more heat, <laughs> like, okay. Um, I tested it, it boosts it up to 4.4 gigahertz on all cores, as opposed to on stock, it only gets to four gigahertz on all cores. So, fairly impressive overclock, but again, I don't think this thin and light chassis is going to be able to handle that overclock very well. So, your best bet might be to just keep it on stock speeds. As I mentioned before, MSI's app gives you full control over the fans which means you don't just get to set a setting, one single setting on the fan, like on the razor blade, but you can set an entire custom fan curve. But for our purposes, here's what the fans sound like at 0%, 50%, and 100%. Really quickly, if you guys like what you've seen, like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Uh, it could be a funny comment, it could be a, if you're like me and you're not funny, it could be like a, a, a regular comment or you could leave a question. I read every single comment. I try to interact with you guys as best as I can in a short amount of time and it would help this channel so much. So I really appreciate it. Now this laptop has this nice gold trim all on the outside edge as well as on the logo and on the trackpad. And while it looks nice, if you're hoping to fly under the radar by bringing a gaming laptop to your office or to a lecture hall or a Starbucks, you're not gonna get away with it, right? It's still a little bit loud, a little bit gaudy. On the left side, you have this really awesome looking exhaust vent. You've got the ethernet port, two USB type A ports, and then here's something that's unique to the MSI G65 laptop. 
you've got the headphone jack and then the microphone jack. And the reason for that is because MSI includes a dedicated DAC for your headphones. Now, if you don't know what a DAC is, you can look it up, but basically it's supposed to improve the audio quality coming from your laptop to your headphones. Now, to be honest, I can't tell the difference and it's not because the difference is not there, but it's because this laptop does all kinds of weird pre-settings to your audio. So I don't know how much of it is because at neutral stock settings with the EQ, all at zero decibels, I don't know if it's that or if it's tweaked the, the EQ at all. Like, I don't know. So because of that, I can't really test it. I would just say that there's a reason why dedicated DACs are as big as they are. So if you're looking for this thing to transform your audio quality, don't bank on that, right? Don't don't bank on that. Don't buy that for the, don't buy this laptop for that reason. Moving to the right side, we got another USB Type A, a USB Type C slash Thunderbolt 3, a mini Display Port, an HDMI out which supports 4K at 60 Hz, and then you've got an AC adapter port. I think this is a weird decision on MSI's part because look how far down this charging port is. And because this is a gaming laptop, and as you're gonna see later, you're probably gonna want a dedicated mouse for this. Because of those things, and because I'm right-handed, sorry left-handers, this is not meant to be a snub against you, but if you're right-handed, you're gonna want a mouse there, and if you're playing these high Twitch games, there's a good chance you're gonna bang into that several times. I know I did. Nothing too crazy on the bottom. You've got these rubber pads, which provide a ton of grip, and then you've got these perforated holes, which to be honest, I don't know what they do because I think the air is intaking from the top, not the bottom. Now you know you're dealing with a premium laptop if it passes the one finger lid open test. And as you can see, this thing passes that test with flying colors. Now because of the hinge design that MSI uses, the screen does wobble quite a bit if you hit it, but I will say in real life testing, when I'm playing games or mashing the keyboard, because there's no flex anywhere in the laptop, the lid doesn't shake at all. So not something you need to be worried about. In terms of the screen, it's got a 144 Hertz IPS panel, which means your games are gonna look buttery smooth. And then it's really color accurate. It covers 98% of the sRGB scale, 76% of the Adobe RGB, and 71% of the NTSC scale. So that means good news for creators. Above the keyboard, you've got these perforated holes, which I thought was where the speakers were located. But when I put my ear there and then I put my fingers there, I think that's where air is being intaken. In took? In took it? <laughs> it's, it's where the air is being sucked in and then it blows out through the sides. So the laptop speakers are actually located on the bottom. So they're down firing speakers, which are supposed to do things like help with bass and help with volume but it only does one of those things well. It has almost no bass, a ton of treble, uh, and it gets extremely loud. Like nobody asked for this thing to be this loud. Kind of impressive though, is that it almost doesn't distort at 100% volume. So here's a sound test compared to my razor blade, but the thing is I, I can't max out the volume because you all will go deaf. So I tried doing a comparison to figure out comparable decibel levels. Take a look and three, two, one. And now let's talk about the keyboard. I have never been this torn over a laptop's keyboard in my entire life. Aesthetically speaking, the type font, in my opinion, is terrible. I prefer a much more modern, clean type font, but this thing chose to use a gamery, futuristic, sci-fi looking font. It, it's not my cup of tea. In terms of keyboard placement, I don't love what they did with that right shift key. They shifted it. <laughs> Get it? They, they shifted the shift, you know. <laughs> oh, I kill me. Anyways, um, they, they shifted the right shift and they shrunk it a little bit. And if you saw my review of the Razer Blade 15, which you can check out here, you know that I use that right side pretty often. So the fact that they did that is causing me to mess up when I, you need to use those that right side of the keyboard. In terms of the secondary functions, I'm a little bit torn here because most keyboards play secondary functions like volume and screen brightness and keyboard backlighting. They place all those functions across the F keys, F1 through I think what, F12? But MSI has chosen to scatter all those secondary functions across the keyboard 
And that wouldn't be a huge issue, except for the fact that there's only one function key, it's on the right side of the keyboard, and so you have to literally pick up your hands to be able to control any of that, as opposed to typically you could hit the function key with your left thumb and then control those secondary functions using your right hand and kind of come right back into place to typing. With this, you have to literally, because you can't see the right side of your keyboard, you have to lift and shift your entire hands over and then lift and shift them back. So I find that to be a little bit odd. The thing that I do appreciate about MSI's keyboard is that when you hit the function key, all of the secondary function keys light up. They light up at full brightness, and so you can see where everything is located. Again, granted that you lift your right hand up because your right hand is covering everything. But all the negative feelings I had towards this keyboard faded away the moment I started typing. I will admit, this is my favorite keyboard on any gaming laptop I've used in my entire life. Better than the Gigabyte Aero 15, better than the Razer Blade 15, better than the Dell XPS. That's about all I've used. But, but of those three, or four I guess, including this one, this is my favorite. When you look at the keys, they look just like the razor blade keys, except they take a good amount of force to actually push the keys, unlike the razor, which their keys feel a little bit mushy. So because it takes a little bit more effort to push a key down, that means less mistakes on my part. Plus the keys are a little bit bigger, meaning that it's easier to move from a desktop keyboard to this one. And then on top of that, it has good feedback and yeah, it just feels really good on the fingers. Highly recommend it, great job Skill Series. Now let's talk about- Oh, we already did that, get out of here. Unlike the Razer Blade, this laptop has rounded edges where your wrists rest, which means a lot more comfort during long typing sessions. The trackpad on this laptop feels great. It's made out of glass and it handles one finger functions to four finger functions really, really well. The problem is, is that the length and width of it is very odd and then because it's not centered, that causes issues as well. So, for starters, if you're using the two finger scroll, because the width of it is very short, you find yourself running out of space very quickly. And then because it's so wide but not centered, when you bring your fingers down from typing and you try to hit that right click, you often end up missing. Even though MSI has allotted more space for the right side to be right click, I found myself missing about 50% of the time. And then on top of that, because again it's so wide, if I'm scrolling and I leave my wrist here and my natural typing moving to scrolling position, I found myself hitting a lot of wrist registers. So if I'm trying to uh, move around the mouse with one finger, because my palm has to rest there and it's inevitably resting on the trackpad, I found that it does a two finger click and then three finger click for two fingers and so on and so on. So a lot of false registers there. And because of that, I'm going to recommend that if you pick this up, you're going to want a dedicated external mouse because again, that trackpad is great, but unfortunately it's a design flaw in my opinion. A quick note, this laptop does not give you an alternative method to sign into Windows. So no Windows hello, facial recognition, no thumbprint reader, which I find at this price point is a little bit odd. Now let's talk about battery life. The battery life on this thing is not great no matter what you do. So at stock settings, without touching anything, I found myself getting about two and a half to three hours of battery. But this is where MSI's app really comes into play. If you open it up and then you go to the battery section, it has a whole bunch of presets and there's one preset called meeting mode. And why they called it meeting mode as opposed to battery saver mode or something to that degree confuses me, but whatever, meeting mode. And what meeting mode does is it down clocks your cores, your CPU cores, all the way down to about 1.2 gigahertz, which is about a quarter of the performance that your laptop should be getting were that setting removed. And think about it. If you down clock your cores that much, that means the power being provided to your laptop should reduce significantly, except on that mode, I found myself getting only about five to five and a half hours of battery which is pretty terrible considering that performance hit that you're taking. Now, at 1.2 gigahertz, you're not really gonna notice any kind of performance degradation. I just think that if you're crippling the laptop that much, you should be getting a lot more than five and a half hours of battery. 
By the way, if you wanna get more battery life out of your current laptop or your future laptop, make sure you check out my video here where I use a similar method to what MSI is doing, except with my method, we have much, much more control over how much we're limiting those CPU cores. So again, check out my video here. So for $1,700 US, should you pick up the MSI G65 Stealth? Well, let's summarize real quick. It has a great screen, an amazing keyboard, decent RGB lighting, and solid build quality. But for the downsides, it has weird design choices like the AC cable placement, the trackpad, the secondary function keys, but more importantly, it gets terrible battery life even after you've crippled its features and you've crippled its performance, and it gets really, really hot even under casual use. And because of that, I'm going to say no. I don't think you should pick this up. You see, because it gets so hot even in casual use, what that means for me is that the lifespan of this laptop is going to be significantly reduced. Now I know, every thin and light laptop gets hot, but they get hot when you game. This laptop gets hot all the time unless you're crippling its performance in battery mode, which I don't think you wanna do all the time, right? And because of that, I'm going to go ahead and say, I don't think this is a good investment. I think this might die a little bit earlier than some other laptops out there. And for that reason, I don't recommend it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like and subscribe. If you disagree with me or you agree with me wholeheartedly, make sure you leave a comment down below as I read every single one. And until next time, guys, stay honest.